Hey, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat with another fellow Office Apps and Services MVP, Eric. It's great to know, great or great to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, why don't you introduce yourself, who you are, where you are, what you do? Uh, so my name is Eric Marcy. I am from Barbon, Ohio. I'm a, a recent Microsoft MVP as of June 1st, 2021. And I am also a unified communications engineer at uh, T2M Works. Uh, so the company is actually based out of Denver, but we have zero offices. So we are an entirely remote uh, workforce. And I work alongside uh, Jonathan McKinney, Richard Brennison, uh, Mitch Steiner, some names that you guys may know from. Uh, John really well, so, yes. And Adam you know. Ball out in the region as well. And a bunch uh -huh. of fun folks that are from that, that part of the world. But uh, well, it's, you know, for those that aren't familiar too, it used to be that, so you see folks, like even coming from the collaboration side and SharePoint, uh, initially a SharePoint MVP, uh, you know, most SIs, most consultants that did collaboration, when a call came in and, hey, we need help with the unified communication side, like run to the experts. We didn't, we did a little bit there, but it was really kind of a, it's a subset of that space where you had the depth of experience around network, around telephony, kind of all those different pieces. It was just much more specialized. Yep. And nowadays you're kind of seeing it more simplified. You're having all these dashboards that kind of tie all that stuff together. So, you know, people that may or may not know the product, you know, in depth can easily log in and find out exactly what's going on with the product. Well, I know that it's a, uh, well, we're waiting here at the beginning of Microsoft's fiscal year. And so I'm, I'm an alliance manager. So I own a lot of the, the Microsoft relationship with my company AppPoint. But uh, so like starting to see some of the metrics come through of what Microsoft is, it feels is important and what they're going to be kind of measured on. And it's going towards that direction. Of course, Teams, which is still, you know, application or, or operating system, what do you want to want to call it now? Um, mm -hmm. It's still number one there. But so much more focus around uh, meetings itself, which includes um, hardware and all the capabilities, the unified communication side of that. So it's it's all rising back up. You can be out front once again, Eric. Yep, indeed. <laughs> it's a good space to be in. I mean, how how's it been through the the pandemic for for you and your team? Uh, pretty much as soon as March last year hit, um, it was pretty much everybody overnight. Okay, we need our phone system in the cloud now. We are moving to the cloud now. It's not a, okay, maybe we need to do this. No, every single person that was maybe looking at you know, Teams or even Skype for Business at the time, um, pretty much overnight was like, okay, we are moving forward these projects immediately and as fast, as fast as we could. Um, so pretty much overnight, we had a tremendous amount of work um, on all of uh, the employees at T2M. And I'm sure any consulting company or any um, other company out there in the space uh, was under the same amount of load. You know, I was just on a panel. One of the questions was, you know, that the, the traditional last question of the of the event was uh, like, what, what do you foresee in the future next three to five years? And I, my first answer was, I think uh, one thing the pandemic did, especially talking about the unified communication side of the house, is they recognized where the gaps were. Things like outdated cameras, um, crappy mics or in headsets and, you know, and, and the rest of that. So it's one thing to be ready, like our data is secure, we're able, we've got the right tools, we can collaborate and communicate with each other. But the quality of that service and, and increasing the game, people buying backdrops, green screens, lights, microphones, yep. all that kind of stuff. And we kind of like to joke about it, but I think that there's so much room for improvement from the vendors and certainly optimized from the, on the software side as well. I think that that's going to be a major topic the next four or five years. Mm -hmm. and, and like, as an example of that, you know, we had one of our customers, they had a deployment of 800 to 900 CX 600 link phone edition devices out there. Like, can we take, give these to our employees and you know, let them move the teams? No. <laughs> so pretty much overnight, a lot of these companies, you know, if they were running that you know, antiquated hardware that wasn't compatible with, you know, newer platforms overnight, they had to start, you know, writing POs to get new hardware, new headsets. Kind of the big push was to get everybody headsets. Cause you know, I don't, not everybody wants to have a phone carrying around with them just to have a meeting. Um, but, you know, just kind of touches base on that point of, you know, overnight, everything pretty much changed in the environment of the world today. 
You know, so back in, so I was at Microsoft for three and a half years and having that, uh, you know, the digital phone tied into, you know, everything, of course, it was completely different solution that we were integrated with, but being able to go in and from Skype or communicator and, you know, and dial to your phone and, and, you know, that, that capability, it's fantastic. But one of the limitations, a lot of the hardware, it's like, it's version specific. Like it's, you upgrade the software you need to replace the the hardware as well um so i i don't have an answer for that it's just an observation but <laughs> yeah it, the companies that had like vvx's for example or you know like a c4 like a 450 hd or something in those that support like that three pip you know those companies were still fine because they were able to continue using those devices um but you know a lot of those ones that we kind of never wanted to spend the money on it those are the ones that were really hurting the most uh, at the start of the pandemic start of and even into the pandemic well, I've thought about, you know, um, for my, uh, for my kids as they're out there, of course, they all have their, their own device. And I, I and I, uh, I was thinking about buying some new hardware, buying something specifically for you know, like teams meetings, every, all of my family has teams and we communicate you know, in different tools, different ways. But then I thought my kids are adults. They're all working Buy your own hardware. What, yep. what am I buying stuff for? I'll, I'll, Buy them a card for their birthday, <laughs> or, or or just use their uh, cell phones, the Teams app. There, there you go. go. That's that, that's the already uh, included option, right? <laughs> we have every flavor of phone that's within our uh, within our family as well. So there's a mm -hmm. there's a common it's a discussion point where somebody will all talk about. I'm on an iPhone and and I've got you know uh, Apple iPhone haters in the family and and uh, then I hear the the the, the whole ios versus android battles and and then the text oh, it, it, it was worse for me I, I was on windows phone until 2018 and i would have those battles all the time get a windows phone and <laughs> i miss i miss mine yep same I really here. like that 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 phone you couldn't get any apps on it, windows phone. <laughs> but i really liked my windows phone i was sad that they gave that up well what what else are you uh, like actively talking about presenting on kind of what are your topics de jour um, so coming up, uh, I'll actually be speaking at Commsverse in the UK. Um, I'm not sure yet if it's going to be in person or not yet uh, for, for you know, traveling from the US to the UK. That's right. Um, it's a hybrid event, but it's, yeah. it's their first in person that they're back doing. Yeah, I did the last one. Yep. So i um, not sure if we're going to be in person yet, but I'm um, at that conference. I'm going to be speaking about um, deploying a highly available Teams voice deployment. Uh, so kind of get a touch base in multiple SBCs, kind of the routing behind that. Uh, SBAs, local media optimization, a lot of those things that, you know, you have available to you, but not every voice deployment today is working and that, you know, kind of bringing that to people's attention so that they can learn, you know, what is there to keep that from our environment highly available. Um, kind of coming up after that, uh, hoping, fingers crossed, uh, comms VNX is uh, going to be happening in October. Uh, nothing official yet, um, but, you know, hopefully that does happen in October. Um, and with that conference, I'm going to be speaking on uh, the media flows between different devices and different uh, different areas within Microsoft Teams. So, kind of what happens if you're using two you know two clients on the same network? If you've got three PIP devices, where is that media traffic going? You know, what does that look like in an actual environment? And kind of explain that so that people can you know better optimize their network for future planning. So, any other events this year? I don't believe there's any other. Um, I think there's Teams Fest in October, but that's more like a virtual. Well, you know, there's the Microsoft 365 Collaboration Conference in Las Vegas the second week in December, which is a good time to be in Vegas. And yeah, very good in terms of weather, but that's also bad uh, if you're uh, somebody that likes blackjack. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it's you know I, I'm just saying that that you know this 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 space this area mm -hmm. is of interest to that crowd. Um, yeah. They're more focused on the applications the, the the front end of that, but to you know, to have people that know the, the unified communication side of that, there's too few people that go speak through that. I would just recommend, and any other UC experts that are out there that are looking to uh, participate in a big event, um, that should be a good event in December. I think it'll be, uh, I'm doing a couple other in-persons prior to that, leading up to that, but I think that's going to be the biggest of the year. For sure. Um, I'll for sure look into that and, you know, follow up on just, that. This is guided. So this is what kind of happens, you know, folks behind the scenes with uh, with MVPs. Like you, you see, you know, people that kind of join the fold and they do, they're doing things more locally, and then they start getting invites to other things. And uh, and a lot of times it's just about awareness. Like, 
We just right. happen to have this conversation. I'm doing a little operational activity, helping share some information about another event. I am not a shill for the event. I'm just a fan of it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and uh, we plan on speaking there myself. So. And, and that's one of those things like, you know, it's hard to keep track of everything that's going on because there's just so much stuff in this space to keep track of them and you know that's a great example of not being aware of something so <laughs> what's the one nice thing i say one nice thing that you can say about uh you know what happened with the pandemic no one talks about the pros of the pandemic uh which is the you know, the increase of obviously in in uh online events and activities and uh but it's, it's pushed like of user groups and while there are so many and you need to be selective it's easy just to fill up all of your spare time and participating in all the various user groups and things around the world but if you're looking for an opportunity to speak and get that experience and kind of show those uh yeah well the depth of your experience and go and get started in the the conference scene then uh you know you just need to reach out to the user groups find out about these these other larger events that are going on submit abstracts Mm -hmm. I get turned down the first few I got turned down and then it kind of clicked. I did the first one and caught the bug and thankfully worked for a couple of companies that really supported the community aspect of what I was doing and recognize mm -hmm. that there's great marketing value in having somebody in the company that goes and does these things. There's a lot of, uh, you know, most MVPs and I'm sure Eric, you're the same way. Like I love sharing my knowledge and helping people yeah. and hearing their unique uh, stories and perspectives, which helps me retell those stories, those scenarios, and provide better guidance. We all mm -hmm. get we all get better at what we do the more we collaborate and, and work together. Um, but it starts with sharing those experiences. Indeed, and like you know, when I work on projects and you know different things in my lab, as you know, a lot of people know me by, um, you know, I'm always like, okay, this is cool information that I know. Let's write a blog post on, and I really enjoy doing that and, and putting that information out there because. You know, even if I come across some minor little bug or some little error, or, you know, you're configuring, you know, let's go old school back to Skype for business, for example, yeah. you're configuring pull pairing or something, you run into a little error. Let's post it out there because somebody somewhere may or may not run into that exact same problem one day and they'll be like, okay, what do I do? And they may not know that much about the product to actually fix that issue. Um, so kind of, I, I enjoy putting that information out there because I know that I'm helping other people make right decisions in their environment and, and not, hopefully not break anything, uh, <laughs> and, and kind of help expand that. So remember the old days of going and looking for information, even the early days of the internet, trying to find information and essentially you're finding like the online versions of the manuals of whatever it is that's broken in your life that you're trying to fix mm -hmm. there. Um, whether it's, you know, your marriage, your car, your software, whatever it is. And there's, you know, you find the manual around that. And then, I mean, that's the benefit of communities that now, like now like, so I'm not a, a car guy. Um, my, help my son buy a beat up used uh, Land Rover. Loved that thing, except um, if you know that world, uh, the Land Rover, it had the uh, three amigos, I think uh -huh. is the name of the problem. So the, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, but uh, to go and find videos that walked you through step by step mm -hmm. how to do something. And again, I, I was finding similar information that I couldn't seem to decipher from the official documentation. But when I had people that had actually walked through the experience and, and did these step by step videos walking through would explain, well, the manual tells you this, but you actually need to disconnect this other part even to get to that piece, you know, little things like that. Is fantastic. Well, the same happens around you know collaboration technology, unified communication technology. Is that there's the one through ten of what you need to do, but then there's the rest of the filler story, the life experience of uh -huh. those that have been through that. That's the value of community. That's what that's what we do. That's we go in and we put the narrative around the steps. Not not talking bad about Microsoft Docs or anything, you know, <laughs> nothing of that matter. There's a lot of times where you can read that and you're like, what in the world are they talking about? And there's just all this stuff that you don't know. And that's one of the things I like incorporating in my blog posts is, you know, pulling all that information and not just showing a step by step how to do something, pulling all the information so you know what you're doing and kind of, you know, put together so that you have all those kind of prerequisites there and it's easy to understand. And that's one of the things that I enjoy. And that's one of the things that I love about the community. You know, if I go back to 2016, you know, there's me, you know, not even a year working in the IT industry since I graduated high school. Um, I came across Skype for Business. 
fell in love with the product overnight. It was a match made in heaven. You know, next day I'm building a Skype server. I'm like, okay, how do I build this? Come across this guy called Jeff Shirts and found his blog. And he's just in depth. So you understand, you know, why you need these DNS records, why you need a certificate with these uh, C names on it. And like all these things that I was foreign to me at the time, um, you know, I fully started beginning to understand a lot of that stuff. And, you know, without that blog post, it wouldn't have been easy for me. Right. Um, so, you know, that's just kind of goes to show, you know, the community is big help to anybody, no matter where, you know, where you're at, whether you're, you know, level one, you know, whether you're level 10, whatever you're at. And then the ability to go, and I don't know, how, did, did you then, uh, did, like, it's great that you find that content, but kind of what was that, that point at which you reached out and connected with some of these people? Did you do that um, right away? Did it take you a while to get there? It took me a while. It took me a little bit to actually get there. Um, it was kind of 2018. I started engaging a little bit with the community and kind of, you know, what, you know, was going on. You know, I st went to our local user group uh, starting back in 2016. The uh, back when it was just the Skype, Skype for business user group, and now it's the Teams user group, uh, which is part of the national level. Um, but I started kind of meeting some people through that um, user group. And then from there, I started expanding out via Twitter, um, came across this uh, person with a cowboy hat called Josh Blaylock, you know, was messaging him. And pretty much as soon as the beginning of 2019 hit, um, it was just all out meeting every single person, um, you know, Pat Richard, Adam Ball, Jonathan McKinney, and just one thing after another, um, you know, started reaching out. So kind of, it was a gradual process. It was not overnight that, hey, I know everybody or, you know, hey, I, I know this person. Um, but that's kind of one of the cool things about the community is a lot of people know each other and, you know, it's easy to keep in touch. Well, that's one of the, I think that's a lesson learned for, for anybody that's out there is like, um, don't take so long to reach out and connect with other players. It's, I mean, it's one thing that it were some people just aren't very good and aren't comfortable with reaching out and kind of cold calling and, Hey, I'm a fan. I read your blog post or, or I've got this question. It's like, Oh, the worst thing that's going to happen is there's going to say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. I can't connect mm -hmm. and help walk you through this, but uh, but usually what will happen, especially with MVPs, is that if if I can't answer that, I'll say, you know who can answer that for you? Uh -huh. And I said, I'm happy to provide an introduction. I do that all the time via LinkedIn. Yep. Um, but that's if somebody has an MVP as part of their their title, if we're in, uh -huh. in there in this world, then we are people that are open to connecting. So yep. don't be shy. Reach out. Uh -huh. For sure. Yeah. LinkedIn, my Twitter is always open, everything. Just shoot me a message anywhere you're at. And, you know, I'm glad to respond. Whether it's on social media, via my blog, any of those things. Excellent. Yeah. What is your Twitter handle? Uh, my Twitter handle is my name, uh, Eric Marcy. And then my uh, blog is ucit.blog. Very cool. So we'll have that in the blog post as well. And I'll, I'll have your Twitter handle. I asked you that question. It will have already appeared on screen, but you know. yep. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's always good. So, um, so what else is, what else is going on? Any other uh, major activities? So you've got, you know, those, those events that are coming up, anything else that you're focused on? Uh, so right now I'm actually working on a direct routing configuration tool. Um, so focusing more on like the advanced side of things. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of blog posts out there. Direct routing in general, if you're just setting up a really basic environment, is very quick and easy to set up. You know, you set up your gateway, set up your voice routes, your policies, everything. You're good to go. Um, but one of the things that, you know, there's not a lot of information out there on is what happens when you have those advanced voice deployments. You know, those ones with, you know, 350 normalization rules per dial plan, the, the ones that need trunk translation rules. You know, what happens with those? And, you know, you'll find some information out there about it. But the big thing that you run into is that a lot of it is, you know, trying to understand Microsoft's way of, you know, building these power commandments. So this tool and this utility that I'm working on is designed to help people in those advanced scenarios. Um, also people in, in, in standard scenarios too. So it's kind of got like kind of more advanced functions and more basic functions built into it. Um, but it's designed to help anybody so that you can quickly get that into your deployment uh, without needing no PowerShell code because you know some not everybody knows PowerShell I'm still I could consider myself a novice so I'm not anything crazy uh, I'm sure you know Pat Richard or somebody could be like oh yeah I could get this in two lines of code or something um, but you know it's kind of one of those cool things I'm working on to help the community and you know kind of that is one example of you know up, some upcoming releases on um, some other things that I, I am working on as well so very cool. Is that stuff that is, is like, can people find out more about what you're working on there, like through your site or? 
Uh, yes. Yeah, so my site is up to date right now with kind of everything that I have released. And a lot of the stuff that I do have released, um, I do continuously update. Uh, one of my most recent ones was uh, bringing the Skype for Business meeting join um, content delivery network on premises. Um, that was kind of a big one, preserving a product just in case they shut down the CDN when they shut down Skype online. Yeah. Um, but kind of coming forward, um, I think I'm going to start doing like a quarterly, you know, update of, hey, here's what's going to come next and, you know, in the future from, you know, the blog. People would absolutely love that. I know that uh, one of the big questions that, I, that I, I'm asked, like a lot of MVPs I'm sure are asked is like, mm -hmm. how do you keep up on everything? And, and my, my response is like, well, I don't. Um, yep. I, so I, I have kind of go-to people around certain topics. Um, mm -hmm. It's funny. So Adam and Jonathan are my go-to UC people. You know, yep. so, and I, I pulled them in, I've interviewed them on a couple things and as, as topics come up, but I have mm -hmm. uh, you know regular post that I go out to. So I've been turning to somebody like you, like if you have a podcast or if you're doing regular videos that provide where you're going watching the Microsoft roadmap and then summarizing that on a monthly or quarterly basis is uh, incredibly powerful. So, so it's just yep. another reason to reach out and, and uh, get to know him. <laughs> So, well, Eric, hey, really appreciate your time. It's great uh, getting to know you and learning about what you're working on. And you've already shared kind of your social contacts there. Why don't you give the blog one more plug? Uh, so the, the uh, blog is ucit.blog. And then Twitter handle is Eric Marcy. Very cool. Well, Eric, well, it was great talking to you. And uh, we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll see each other soon. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know when the next time is there. There's another event that's happening in person in Denver. Are the guys doing another uh, of their events? Like, so it's not nothing official yet, but yeah. they're we're, we're shoot. They're, they're they're trying to do uh, something come October in person. So I'm not cool. sure on yeah. the details yeah. of that. I will um, drive over the hill so. for that. So uh, I'm just on the <laughs> other other side of the Rockies from them. So awesome. All right, well, Eric. Well, thanks a lot for your time, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you so much for the time today, and. Wow! Wow!